In this video, I lay out my top five stocks that I plan to buy this week, either outright in my Roth retirement account, or I will sell puts in them in my main trading account. This video is a part of a series of videos I'll be producing every week or two where I analyze the 150 stocks that I track, I review them, and lay out my top five personal favorite picks that I plan to trade the next week. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year real estate investor as well as stock and option trader. If you're not a member of our community already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more profitable, knowledgeable, and consistent traders and investors. Stay tuned until the very end of this video because I'm going to share with you what I like to call my all-star pick. This is a stock that will not be in my top five, it's my absolute favorite stock this week based on the technical analysis as of right now. The final decision of which stocks I buy or sell puts on will be made based on the price action on Monday and throughout the week. If any of these stocks are down on Monday, they'll most likely end up in my very top pick positions. Remember that I'm not offering you financial trading advice. Please do your own research on any investment you make. I'm only sharing my personal journey and the stocks that match my trading strategy as well as my own risk tolerance. Let's get started with my number five favorite stock this week that I'm trading. Coming in at the number five spot is Tyson Foods, ticker symbol TSN. Tyson Foods is the largest U.S. producer of processed chicken and beef. It's also a large producer of processed pork and protein-based products under the brands Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farm, Ballpark, Sara Lee, and Steak Fair. They sell 90% of their products in the U.S. They sell to retailers, food service distributors, restaurants, and non-commercial food service establishments like schools, healthcare facilities, and military bases. The other 10% of their revenue comes from Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Europe, China, and Japan. I consider them to be a consumer defensive stock. Their cash payout ratio is around 35%, so they have plenty of room to continue growing their dividend. The stock is currently at the very bottom of a fairly strong upward trending weekly chart. It did break the bottom of the channel back in March, but seems to be consolidating around the current $60 strike price. I already own a 2.5% position in my retirement account, and I also have already sold some puts in my main trading account at the $57.5 strike price. If I were to open additional positions, I would probably sell options around the $55 strike price. If the return is good enough, I would even consider selling puts around the $50 strike price. I like this company. They're getting hurt by restaurants and schools and other such closures, but it's a company that in my opinion, it's a solid company. They provide a product that we all have to have and love, food. My number four favorite pick for this week is AT&T, ticker symbol T. This is a company that I've been watching for quite a while, and I finally took a position in it over the past month. AT&T is the largest telecom in the world by revenue. Its main divisions include wireless communication, which is 40% of its revenue, consumer and entertainment, which contributes 25% of its revenue, and Warner Brother Media, that contributes a little bit less than 20% of its revenue. Warner Media's divisions include HBO, the Turner Cable Networks, and the Warner Brother Studios. In the environment we find ourselves in right now, I like investing in communications companies and in a company that has been through a, a lot of ups and downs, but has still consistently raised its dividend. AT&T has raised its dividend for over 30 consecutive years. As such, it's a dividend aristocrat. It does have a lot that it's trying to juggle right now with its acquisitions, expanding to 5G, and trying to maintain this dividend growth but it has a nice high dividend and a decent dividend growth. This is a company that if you invest in it for the long term, you need to keep your eye on it because although it has some things going for it, it's still dealing with some challenges such as paying down huge debts and trying to properly manage an industry that is going away in the wired lines business. AT&T's growth rate is it's not spectacular, coming in at 2.12% over the past decade, but hopefully this will begin to increase again once their debt gets under control. Their cash payout ratio is right around 55%. This is a company that I like. I already own some of my retirement account, and I have sold some puts at the $30 strike price that expired in July in my main trading account. It's one of the few stable companies that has not skyrocketed back up to where it was earlier this year. If I were to enter a new position, I'd probably be selling puts around the 27 and a half 
to $30 strike price. There seems to be nice accumulation between those two prices. As such, this seems to be a prime stock to collect some premium on by selling some put options. Moving on to my number three stock for this week, and it's Coca-Cola. Besides it being a very solid, stable company, the reason I like the stock right now is when you look at the weekly chart, you'll see that it's at the very bottom of an upward trending weekly channel. It had a huge drop back in March and has recovered some, but not nearly to the highs that it was at at the beginning of this year. Again, this is another position that I already own some in my retirement account, and I'd be glad to add more. And I also have already sold some puts in my main trading account that expire in July at the $45 to $47.5 strike prices. I'll be looking to roll both of these positions. I don't see Coca-Cola going a whole lot higher than $50 over the next few months and expect it to continue to consolidate between $42 and $50. There's always the possibility that it drops further as it did back in March, but I like the company. I like the dividend and I like the premium that I can get by selling put options on Coca-Cola right now. If I were entering a brand new position in Coca-Cola, I'd probably look to sell the $42.5 strike puts in August. Right now, I have an order sitting out there to roll my $47.5 strike puts out to August. And over the next couple of weeks, I'll also look to roll my 45 July short strike puts to August as well. I don't think Coca-Cola needs a whole lot of introduction, but briefly, some of the fundamental things I like about it is that it's an international company. In fact, they generate over 50% of their revenue from outside the U.S. I like it when a company has diversified income. It's a world-class company with one of the strongest dividend growth track records. They still have room to grow in emerging markets, so I like that growth potential as well. Their cash payout ratio is a little bit high. It's right around 83% but the overall payout ratio is still reasonably safe in my opinion at just under 70%. My number two favorite pick this week is LeMate Vascular, ticker symbol LMAT. LeMate Vascular manufactures and distributes medical devices for the treatment of peripheral vascular disease. I love a company that helps people that are dealing with health issues. That's exactly what this company does. Although they have a low dividend yield, most of their products are either number one or number two in their category. Their products are sold in over 22 countries. They are a high growth company as can be seen from their acquiring 24 businesses over the past 23 years. Although they are high growth, they are still a relatively small company. So if you're looking to trade options on them, it might be difficult because there are not a whole lot of option contracts out there. It can be done, but it'll be more challenging. Because this is a small company, the stock price can kind of go all over the place. It lost 50% of its value back in January and March of this year. But as a long-term investor, when prices drop, if the company is still strong in my opinion, it doesn't bother me. I just try and buy more of it when that happens. In my opinion, this is a solid company with nice growth potential. Its cash payout ratio is at 74% and its overall payout ratio is less than 50%. I believe this company has the potential for double-digit dividend growth over the coming years. The other thing I really like about this company is that it has no debt. That is huge in my opinion. This gives the company a lot of room to grow by acquisition. And at the same time, reward us, the owners, with nice dividend increases. If we look at the weekly chart of LeMate, we see that it was in a nice uptrend until 2019. Now it seems as though it's happy to be in a slight downtrend. In my opinion, this provides an opportunity to pick up some shares of a great small cap company. It's getting close to the bottom of its channel now, so as such, I've been adding to my position in my retirement account. In the comments below, tell me what your favorite stock is that you're trading outright or trading options on right now. I'm curious to see what companies you're currently trading. Before I get to my absolute favorite all-star pick for this week, my number one favorite stock is one that is not nearly as well known as Coca-Cola, but it's also a lot bigger than LeMate. One of the reasons I like this company so much is because it's a monopoly. That company is the CME Group, ticker symbol CME. The CME Group is based in Chicago and operates exchanges that let investors, suppliers, and businesses trade futures and derivatives based on a number of things, including interest rates, foreign currencies, energy, metals, and commodities. It was founded in 1898 and completed its initial public offering in 2002. They also have a 27% stake in the S&P and Dow Jones Indexes LLC, along with an exclusive license to trade and clear 
S&P futures contracts. It is a dominant player in the derivatives products business. In my opinion, this is a long-term hold type of company. Their dividend is lower than where I like to buy a company at, but they show consistent and stable growth in that dividend. They are also known to pay a special dividend at times, so this improves that dividend percent. The cash payout ratio is a little bit higher because of the special dividend, but overall, I really like this company. I sold some July 17th, $175 strike put several weeks back, and the stock moved against me. But as expected on the weekly chart, it's now hitting up against the 200 moving average, so I anticipate they'll probably accumulate around this $165 area. As such, I'll most likely look to roll this position out to August and stay at the $175 strike price for now. If I were entering a brand new short option position in CME, I'd probably look to sell the $160 strike put that expires in August. Now, before I get to my all-star pick of the week, if you'd like to check out the cash flow that we received by trading options and getting paid dividends last month, check out the video in the link above. And I'll also put a link down in the description below so you can watch it when you're done with this video. I think you'll see why I like trading options on dividend stocks so much. The cash flow can be awesome. Finally, I want to share with you my all-star pick. The reason I call this my all-star is because, in my opinion, it's one of the more stable companies in my portfolio. I've owned this company for several years, and I've been trading options in it in my main trading account for quite a while. It might be considered a boring company, but any company with consistent revenue growth that consistently pays its owners dividends and grows those dividends, well, I can't call that company boring. I call it exciting. My all-star pick for this week is a company that does not go on sale very often. It's not a high-flying company, but it's one of my favorites, and it's Duke Energy, ticker symbol D-U-K. Duke Energy's history dates back to the early 1900s, and the company is the largest electric utility in the country today. It serves approximately 7.7 .7 million electric customers and 1.6 million gas customers across the Southeast and the Midwest. This is another company that might be considered a monopoly. It's essentially a government regulated monopoly. In fact, except for in Ohio, all of Duke's electric utilities operate as sole suppliers in their service territories. It's simply too expensive for newcomers to get into the business. We're talking about billions and billions of dollars to build and maintain these power supplies for its customers. There is a downside to being a monopoly and that the price that they can charge for services is controlled somewhat by the state commissions. Fortunately, Duke Energy operates in states that have favorable demographics and population growth as well as regulatory bodies. They have earned a healthy return on equity between 8.5% to 12% over the last few years and these returns seem likely to remain stable over the coming years. Duke Energy has a track record of paying uninterrupted dividends for more than 90 years. It provides predictable earnings that its investors, us, we can count on. Duke seems likely to remain a reliable and appealing dividend growth investment for many years to come. Besides being a company that I have owned for quite a while and traded in for several years, if we look at the weekly chart, it looks like it could potentially be an awesome time to buy some of the stock or sell some put options in the stock. As you can see here on the weekly chart, it is close to the very bottom of a strong weekly uptrending channel. This is a company that I already own in my Roth retirement account, and I currently have sold put options in my main trading account at the $82.5 strike price, which expire on July 17th. I plan to roll this position out to August. Right now, I plan to stay at the $82.5 strike price. I think we're going to have some sideways movement for a while as the 50 and 200 moving average are coming together on the weekly chart. If I were entering a brand new short option position, I'd most likely sell a 72 and a half or $75 strike puts. So there you have it, my top six stocks that I plan to buy on Monday in my retirement account, as well as throughout the week as I roll some of my option positions that are expiring in July. If you found value in this video, please hit the like and subscribe button as well as the bell notification and check out this video in the link above and in the playlist, the description below for more information on my actual trading strategies. Please remember that I'm not giving any financial or investing advice. I'm not telling anyone to spend or invest their money. These are not my suggested trades. I'm only using these trades for teaching purposes to hopefully help you become a better, more profitable trader. Know what you're trading and continue your financial education. 
Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.